etc. So this is things like this, operations like this have to be done. They have to be done. We have to show these people that this is still England. Reject the false prophet Muhammad and follow the true saviour of the world, Jesus Christ our Lord. And when people might say to us, well, you, you, your prophet is a false prophet. So we should say, okay, so this is what false prophets do. False prophets call us back to the original message that was preached by all of the previous prophets, like, you know, Noah and, and Abraham and Musa a.s. Regarding Jesus speaking about false prophets to come after him, who will deceive people, it's actually interesting that that passage applies to Paul more than anybody else. Number one, Paul openly admitted to deceiving people. He said in his letters, to a Jew, I'm a Jew. To one under the law, I'm a law. To one who's not under the law, I'm not under the law. In other words, he'll act like anything to gain converts. Now that's a deceiver. Moreover, the book of Deuteronomy tells us how to test a false prophet. If they give false prophecies, Paul in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 claimed that Jesus would return within his lifetime and, the, and his followers. Did that happen? No, it's been 2,000 years and it's a false prophecy. So that Matthew chapter 24 quote about false prophets applies to Paul. The third criterion is that the book should not have a failed prophecy. Deuteronomy 18.22 says that if a prophet speaks something and it doesn't happen, don't listen to him. In short, that is a false prophet. Now it turns out that there are, new, there, there are passages in both the Old Testament and the New um, that uh, predict something and then it doesn't happen. For example, Paul, writing in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17, speaks of Jesus coming back in Paul's own lifetime so that he is included among the we who would be taken up into heaven when Jesus returns. And of course, this did not happen. It is a failed fail prophecy. And on this criterion, the Bible fails. Now, the Old Testament is basically the Jewish scriptures then. And now, do you know from any of your Jewish friends that, that God is one in three or three in one? Do you hear any Jews saying God is Father, Son, Holy Ghost? No. So for centuries, the Jews have been reading their Bible, and all they're getting from their Bible is that there is only one God. And in fact, nobody else gets anything else from the uh, Jewish Bible but this teaching, that there is only one God. It's repeated so many times, it's uh, emphasized in so many different ways. For example, in the book of Deuteronomy, in chapter 6, verse 4, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. It's emphasizing one God. And that has become the most important teaching in, in, the, in the Old Testament, in the Jewish Bible. And it's stressed with such uh, emphasis that the Jews are required, according to the Bible, to write this statement that becomes now their kalima, their shahada. It, 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 they have to write it and take that written material and, and tie it on their foreheads and tie it on their wrists and, and nail it to their doorposts so that they should never forget that, that is the most central teaching. That is their kalima, that is their shahada. There is only one God. Now, when, when the original Christians preached that uh, Isa is the son of God, uh, they must have meant that metaphorically. Like you say that somebody is a good man, somebody is special to God and so on. You might say son of God in that way. In the Old Testament it was done like this. So in the Old Testament, in the Jewish Bible, even though Jews are strict monotheists, they have only one God. Everyone else are the creatures of God. So uh, Dawud alayhi salam, Sulaiman alayhi salam, they're all creatures of God. Now, that's very clear in the Jewish mind. Yet, in the Old Testament you will find that Dawud alayhi salam is called the son of God. Sulaiman alayhi salam is called the son of God. Yaqub alayhi salam is called the son of God and so on. Uh, so it did not matter to them this is metaphorical metaphorical it means that God loves this person this person is special to God and so on but still human being so if the Christians started to say that about Isa alayhi salam they were not in a way deviating from their historical uh, legacy it was still within the scope of their belief there's only one God Jesus is the prophet messenger of God and you can call him son of God meaning that God loves this person. Hmm? is close to God. But now, when this message is preached to the Greeks, who take Zeus and Hermes and so on for God, what do you think they're going to think? Ah, the son of God? Literally the son of God. So, when, when the Greeks started to come into Christianity, they started to embrace the, the, the way, as it was called at the time, uh, then naturally they came with those ideas and they made Isa a.s. literally the son of God. Uh, Sheikh Didat says, okay, so you can picture the son. There is a man. 
He's on the, uh, on the bank of the river. You can picture the bird. The bird comes and alights on his shoulder. Okay, you can picture the father in heaven. Maybe they think of the father as being an old man with a long beard or whatever. He's sitting somewhere in heaven. Okay, so you have these three images on your, in your mind. Okay, so what's the image of the Trinity? So you have these three distinct images. These are the Father, the, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in between. So what's the image of the three together? The one God that is in these three persons. There is no image for that one God. So you, you cannot picture that one. So there's a deficiency in the way in which God is being conceived of here. And obviously the solution to this confusion is to go back to what the Old Testament taught and to insist that there is only one God. Well, it's the Quran that brought us back to that message. And when people might say to us, well, you, you, your, your prophet is a false prophet. So we should say, okay, so this is what false prophets do. False prophets call us back to the original message that was preached by all of the previous prophets, like you know Noah and, and Abraham and Musa a.s. Uh, th that's what false prophets do? Is this the work of shaitan or is this the work of God that's bringing us to back to that original message? In fact, we should look back and see uh, what, what spirits... Uh, cause people to deviate from that original message which the Bible had said they should write on their foreheads and band on their hands and nail on their doorposts. So I, I believe this is a very uh, important point that we need to share.